Hello developers. In this video, I'm going to share with you the experience of my team and me about doing the Spring Boot version 3 update for a real productive system. It's different to other tutorials or videos where you just see demo code being updated. Um, here I share with you the experience we made when we updated our system, which has been developed for over two years by six developers and which is already in, in production. Yeah. So that is some kind of, of a different uh, game because it's just way more complex than all the demo projects. Uh, why did we do the update? Yeah, of course, we want to be on the latest state, and that means we want to have the latest spring version, which is spring version 6. And when you update spring boot to 3, you get also spring version 6, because all of that is managed by spring boot for you. The spring framework in version 6 is built on the latest Java long-term support release, which is version 17. And that's not really a big difference for your project because you might have been using Java 17 before based on spring version 2.7, for example. But the difference and the benefit is now that the spring framework itself is built with Java 17 and therefore the spring framework benefits from the features of Java 17 and that is an indirect benefit for you because you are using now, let's say, a better Spring framework than you have been using before. The main uh, highlight, uh, which is also directly usable by you, are the native images. So Spring is now officially supporting Grail VM, and you can use Spring native to build native images. And um, if you are interested in those native images, which enables your application a super fast start with in way less than one second, um, yeah, you can use native images. And I have written another blog article about this. So check out this to see how this native image thing is working and how you can do this on your own and how you can use uh, the, this top feature of the new Spring Boot version. Besides this, of course, many third-party libraries have been updated. So if Spring Boot is managing your dependencies, you will get a bunch of updates. And that means you get also a bunch of security fixes. And um, yeah, being on latest versions, of course, uh, contains always a lot of uh, security fixes and you have less risk inside your application. So that's another good thing. So if you are planning the Spring Boot update, you can check out uh, the Spring Boot 3 migration guide provided by uh, Spring. So it's documented here. I um, brought uh, down the main bullet points. So the first thing you should do is update to the latest Spring Boot version before 3, which is 2.7. Then you should make sure that you are using Java 17. It will not work anymore with Java 11 in your application if you're using Spring Boot 3. And after um, those preconditions have been achieved, yeah, you can update to Spring Boot 3, um, adjust the dependencies and adapt your code so that the compile errors you might get by using deprecated and removed features are uh, then solved. Yeah, So that is the work you have to do. And of course, that is way more detailed described in this migration guide. But I will come back to this when uh, we walk through the examples uh, I will give you in this presentation. OK, so what we had to do in, in our team, we are using code generation uh, for calling all the REST APIs. We use code generators to get generate the code. And we had to switch from Swagger Code Generator to OpenAPI Code Generator because Swagger Code Generator didn't support Spring Boot version 3 and OpenAPI Code Generator does. So I will show example about this uh, in a moment. So, But our top level plan means uh, con contained that this is the first step. Second step is that we uh, enable Spring Boot 3 by configuring it in the parent POM, 
adapting the code generation so that it generates Spring Boot 3 compatible code. Afterwards, we want to customize our code. We have all known that uh, Spring Boot is now Spring Boot 3 is now based on Jakarta uh, packages instead of Java X uh, imports and, and packages. So you have to adapt all your imports. And um, for Spring Security, also some code configuration changes are needed. So that are the steps we planned up front. But as I said before, yeah, if you have a real world big application, you will not, never get uh, everything from the beginning and you will face issues during really doing the update. And that is also what happened to us. So let me um, tell you now what we had to do in practice. First of all, as I mentioned before, um, code generation. So we switched to Open API code generator. Here you can see the plugin which we are using now, Open API generator maven plugin version 6.2.1 um, beside this it looks pretty similar to the swagger code generator but now we can enable here use spring boot version 3 and uh, then the generated code is using the jakarta imports instead of the java x imports and here you might see a, another thing and that is like where the real world real world uh, catched us yeah um, our system is using more than 10 apis so we have some very good uh, open api specifications and some bad and the swagger code generator just processed all of them showed some warnings but the open api code generator stops and the code is not generated so you have to work around and our workaround was to skip the validation specification step by setting here this attribute and then um, the code generation worked and we could move on. Next issue, oh, we have a legacy API we forgot in the planning. Yeah, like we have a SOAP API and for that we are also generating code and of course we forgot about it. And um, the issue here is that uh, the plugin which we are using, yeah, sorry, it's this tab, um, didn't support it, so there has been an open question, and another guy uh, told us all, yeah, use um, another version, another fork of this plugin. So we switch to this other fork of the plugin, which is also supporting checks B3 and 4. And um, so we did this update to this new fork, and you can see the code now here. So this is a new plugin we are using in a newer version. And then it just generates code with Jakarta imports instead of Java X imports. And that was then working fine. Yeah. Afterwards, uh, the code generation step has been done and we had our code and a lot of compile errors because we have to deal now in our own code with the Java X imports yeah, by replacing them with Jakarta imports. Uh, I recommend uh, that you are using the search and replace functionality of your IDE. IntelliJ has it, Eclipse has it. So you can search in all Java classes and replace, let's say everywhere, import whitespace Java X with import whitespace Jakarta. That will um, resolve a lot of your compile errors. Afterwards, you might still have some compile errors because you might have done some false changes. We had, for example, one where still in a third party library, there is a folder called Java X. Um, and that was then a compile error. So we reverted this back and then it was just working. But in general, yeah, I recommend change all those things on bulk. And afterwards, the compiler is your friend. Uh, check what the compiler tells you where the compile errors are and then adapt uh, those places. Uh, we had some more things like the HTTP status enumeration uh, implements now an HTTP status code interface. And uh, that's why we had to update our web client uh, so that it deals now with HTTP status code. Um, that's another example about code adjustments. And the same way we have in Spring Security some code adjustments. Um, the authorize requests method is now authorize HTTP requests. The end matches is gone and it's now request matches. Um, here is my recommendation. 
just adapt this. Don't get too much into the details about those new methods if they are offering different features if you can do the same thing now in a different maybe better way yeah if you are focusing on spring boot update focus on that and don't get into new features right now yeah complete the update and then get into new features um, if that helps you another thing what we had yeah i try always to write as less code as possible that's why I, my spring security configuration didn't have the add configuration annotation so um the add enable web security annotation managed to create the beans before and the add configuration was not needed with spring boot 3 it's now needed add enable web security doesn't um, create beans anymore so we didn't have this and by the price now every page has shown the spring default login because all our security filter chain beans have not been created so take care of that and um, then it will just work out we have been using mock mvc um, mock mvc had also an issue with spring security um, so uh, before in spring.2.7 the filters have just not been used and with spring.3 um, we received now um, unauthorized exceptions in our tests instead of the expected uh, redirect here in this case so we had to say that our add configuration mock mvc annotation shall not add the filters so add filters false and then it was working as before again yeah i don't recommend uh, you to build now a different style of uh, mock mvc test use the style you are using before and just make sure that it's still working maybe by just adding here the filters probably there are better and other ways but in order to get the update done yeah you should go for the simple way and and try to move on and complete the update process final uh, piece and trouble was spring webflow i don't recommend spring webflow because um, currently in maven central repository you find version 2.5.1 and it didn't receive an update for over four years so even it's part of the spring framework they did not add spring webflow to spring boot so it's even not really managed by uh, spring yeah they announced that they are working on a, a version 3.00 of spring webflow um, but this has still not been completed uh, four months after the official um, spring boot 3 release so um, yeah, it is an issue for legacy reasons. We have it in our code base. Uh, probably a good improvement in the future is to get rid of it. Um, so we need to work around and um, not use the Maven central repository to get, um, uh, let's say, a beta version of Spring Webflow. So we downloaded, we have now a dependency to the uh, Milestone 1 release, which is not an official release and um, therefore we need another milestone repository in our maven configuration we added it like this and then the code compiled and we could use our application but it's it's really a risky thing here yeah we are using a beta version of spring webflow um, so make sure that you have really good tests and you test your application well if you are going to let's say not official released versions of, of libraries in order to do the update and to finish the Spring Boot general update. Yeah? There are some more detailed issues um, about Spring security attributes, changes as you can see here before it was role user, now it's open ID uh, connect user. Um, and of course, uh, the Spring Webflow needs adaption for it, as you can see here. But I would skip those details if you are interested in it. Just read the blog article. I guess I hope that most guys of you are lucky and are not using Spring Webflow anymore. So let me come to my conclusion. Um, the complexity of the Spring Boot 3 update really depends on the size of your application. Um, 
the more libraries you have in use and the more libraries which are not managed by Spring Boot, the more complex the update will be for you. Um, it's really the bigger your system is, the more effort you have to spend to do a successful effort. Because as you can see here in my blog article and with the example of our Teams application, there are always like expected trouble and unexpected trouble. And um, yeah, you somehow have to deal with it to, to get the job done. Now we are on Spring Boot 3. And um, since we had really a good uh, testing of our application with JUnit tests and automated end-to-end -end tests with um, Selenium. Um, we have been convinced that the update was a success and um, therefore we have it now already in production. So if you liked my presentation and my video, please give me a thumb up and subscribe to my channel so that you get more interesting videos in the future. See you next time.